Hey everyone, so I'm going to follow up the previous video on adding data into the Firestore with a super simple demonstration of how to get the data out of the Firestore. Okay, so uh, we're picking up right where we left off at the end of that adding to the Firestore video. Um, and now our goal is to get the data out of the Firestore, to query the data. And we'll start out with something very simple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another button here, first of all. So, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, let's make this big. All right, I'm just going to add a button, and we don't need the log cat right now, so let's shrink that. Uh, I'm going to add a button just below the submit button, and in fact, I'm going to copy and paste the submit button because it's going to kind of be pretty similar. I'm going to call it uh, refresh. Oh, it'll be the refresh button. It'll show the text uh, refresh. So we're going to refresh the data. Um, we're going to call a different method when this button is clicked. It's called on refresh click. Uh, where do we want it? We want it in the middle horizontally, and let's put it below the submit button. Okay, there we go. And I probably want to spell refresh correctly. And let's give it a little margin up at the top. Um, layout margin top, just something small, say 12. And yeah, let's do eight. It doesn't really matter, but let's give it a little bit of margin. All right, so now I've got a second button there, and I need to define this onClick method. All right, let me, I'll expand this so you can see the whole thing um, for the button. And you can pause here if you need to look at this for a second. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my Firestore list activity, and let's handle what's what we want to do when somebody clicks on this button. Okay, so I'm in my Firestore list activity, uh, and we're going to do public void, and then the name in the on click method, which I copied on refresh click with the view. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to get the data out of the Firestore. How do we do that? It's actually not so bad. Um, before we called mdb.collection.add, this time we're going to call a slightly different method, which is get. Okay, so let's uh, get our Firebase instance object, Firestore uh, MDB. Once again, we have to specify the collection that we're dealing with here. Uh, before, the collection where we put our data in was called patients. So we should probably get our data out of patients as well. Right? Now here, once again, I've got this string that I'm reusing in a couple of places. Good idea to just make a constant out of it and reuse it, right? And then that way, if for some reason we change the collection that we're using later, we only have to change it in this one place up here, in patience, okay? So I've created this uh, public final string patience, and instead of specifying it manually, I'm going to reuse the string here, and then I'll also use it down below in the, the submit click. Okay, so collection.patients. Now, what do we need to do? If you want all of the objects in the collection, um, it's pretty simple. You call get. Okay, that gives you all of the objects in the collection. Like add, this is an asynchronous call. Right, so it's going to go up to the cloud, ask for all the data, and bring it back to you over the internet. So this is an asynchronous call. It's your code does not stop at this point. Right, you can't assign this to anything. Uh, it won't work. What you have to do, um, like we did with add, is call the um, let's add a success listener. Okay, so. The success listener method will get fired off when the data comes back. Um, we have to make a new on success listener just like we did down below. Uh, I'm going to use the autocomplete again to my advantage. Okay. And it's in here in the body of this on success method where we want to do the work. Okay, and actually go through the information that comes back. And the information that comes back takes the form of this query snapshot class, which is kind of weird. 
stuff. Um, it's something particular to the fire store. Uh, so, but let's go through that data and see what we've got, okay? So, this is a collection, okay? Uh, it is something, it, and as a collection, it is iterable. So we can loop over this thing, okay? The way we loop over it, let's create a for loop or a for each loop. Um, the type of data that is in this collection is query document snapshot okay so we've asked to give give me all the documents in this collection okay one document is a query document snapshot okay so call it document so for each query document snapshot in this guy that I'm getting back we can do something okay um, first let's just log it Okay, log it with the tag. Now the example that Firebase provides is you can get document.id, right? This is, or excuse me, document.getid. Okay, this gives you the unique value associated with the document. So this, this thing here, these weird strings. Okay, document.getid uh, plus, now in their example they have uh, it's a little arrow, and then if you want the data, you call document.getData. Okay, now let me kind of do get data. Now you can see here, um, Android Studio is telling you that get data returns a map, right? A map of strings and objects for each document. Right. Those strings and objects are, this is the field, the string is the field name, and the object is the value. Right. So you're getting a map back from the Firestore. Okay. Now if we print this out, um, or if we run our app, let's shrink this so we can get our app up, um, in our log cat, so I'm opening the log cat, Probably got it down off the screen. Let's drag it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm opening the log cat here. Let me rerun this to get these changes applied. Mm -hmm. ah, gotta rebuild the whole thing. Go into the Firestore list view. Let me pull up again, pull up your log cat. Okay. Now when I hit refresh, what I should get is a list of all the data that was in there, right? That's what I told it to do. Um, for each document, show me its data. And there it is. And it took a second, right? It took a second to populate this thing. Um, if we scroll over a little bit, here's the map, right? Name equals this, age equals that. Um, pretty cool. Now, we are not querying or reducing the, the type of things you can do. If you go back to the video on the Firestore search, it tells you how to build a query to only get certain things, like certain things where the name is equal to Lucas, for example. That's a good thing. Uh, collections can get large. You know, think of the collection of photo names on Snapchat. You don't want to be downloading everything every time and then filtering it. It's much better to filter it during your query uh, than after, okay? But I digress. Um, remember how we created a patient class to kind of capture the essence of, you know, it's not just a map of name and age, it's, it's representing a patient. Um, the uh, Firestore provides a method for converting these things into a patient object. It's pretty easy. Um, you call document, right? Document is, you get one document, that's what we're looping over, dot two object. Okay, document dot two object. And then you gotta give it the class to convert it into. Okay, patient dot class. Okay, that was the name of our patient class that we created. All right, this returns a new patient object, and we should store that somewhere. Okay, so if here is where the names 
of your attributes in the patient class really matter. Remember, we've got no argument constructor, we've got getters and setters, and they have a very particular name. This is this method call here takes advantage of those naming schemes. Okay, but this is all we call. Now we've got a patient object, and now I can treat this thing not like a map, but more intuitively as a model in my application. Um, why don't I put all of these? It'll be useful later. Let's put these into a list, right? Um, so let me make a new array list. Okay, this array list is going to hold a list of patient objects, and I'll call it patients, and I'll initialize it to be empty. Okay, and all I'm going to do here with this array list is I'm going to add, convert every document into a patient, and then shove it into this array list. And that'll be useful for me in the future, right? So I've created a new patient here. Let me just go ahead and add the patient, patients.add p, right? Patients.add p, and that'll put them all in there. All right, so that should do it for us, right? Um, let's check and make sure that this worked. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to take this log statement out and let's modify it. Um, whoops. Yeah, let's take it out. Let's put it down here. And actually, let's move it here. And instead of logging the contents of the document, let's log the patient that we just created. p.getName plus put a little space, p.getAge, right? So here we've converted it to an object, a patient object, and instead of logging the document directly, now I'm logging the patient object. And, oops, I've got to apply my changes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let me clear out my log cat. I'm gonna click on the trash can here, clear out the log cat, let me refresh. All right, so now here I'm logging this instead. Pretty cool. All right, so now I've got the data out. Nice. Um, I've got a, an array list of all the patients that are in the patient's collection. The next step is I probably want to do something. I probably want to show that to the user. Uh, and we'll go over how to do that in the next video.